So I was told by uh, some people that I should talk about people that nobody you know has ever heard of. But then, you know, really, I think people have heard of them. It's just with modern, um, with modern TV and stuff, they repeat the same, the same stuff, the same crap over and over and over again. And, and the real scientists and the really important figures and, and discovery aren't ever, they're never mentioned. And one of these people is, uh, Konstantin Marischkowski. Here's a little picture of him. He is a um, <clears throat> a prominent Russian biologist and botanist, active mainly around Kazan, whose research on lichens led him to propose the theory of symbiogenesis, that larger, more complex cells of eukaryotes evolved from the symbiotic relationship between less complex ones. He presented this theory in 1910 in his Russian work, The Theory of Two Plasms as the Basis of Symbiogenesis, a new study or the origins of organisms. Although the fundamentals of the idea already had appeared in his earlier 1905 work, The Nature and Origins of Chromatophores in the Plant Kingdom. He was born uh, in 1855 and he died in 1921. So, you know, he's, he's 65 years old. He died in Geneva, Switzerland. And this... Uh, this man was a real scientist. This is this is this is the real deal here. Um, I wanted to go ahead and print one of his little diagrams here. Basically, what happens is you have a very primitive eukaryote, and then they absorb other uh, bacteria, which then become the mitochondria, and then become the chloroplast, depending on you know what happens and all the organelles inside of a cell were adopted by that cell as it you know evolved and here's a little diagram you can find this on Wikipedia if you look up symbiogenesis but you have your main um, eukaryote the very primitive one the archaean one and then each line they they adopt specific um, bacteria which then um, become symbiotic with the cell itself and symbiotic means you have the cell and it's doing a certain function but to do other functions better it adopts um, external uh, organelles external cells which then go into the cell and the cell becomes more apt to, to, to survive in its environment so whatever bacteria it adopts gets a boost, it survives, and then the larger cell itself also survived because of what that little organelle is doing inside of it to allow for it to survive. So there, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's you give me this, and then I'll give you this, and we'll both survive together. And that's a very, very, um, very good thing uh, for life to be symbiotic with one another. You know, not parasitic. Parasitic is if you have an organism and then you have another organism latch onto it and it just sucks and sucks and sucks and it doesn't do anything for the host that's that's not good but if you're symbiotic you both each get something in return um, that's a good idea Let, think about like alligators and alligators that you know keep a mouth open I think crocodiles do this and there are these specific types of birds that fly into the crocodiles mouth and they start you know plucking away all the little bits and pieces of food and that, you know, helps the alligator, you know, <laughs> or the crocodile's dental health and the food and the bird also gets food. So it's a symbiotic uh, relationship. But anyways, I, I wanted to I wanted to try to begin trying to explain how life would evolve using endosymbiosis, because I, I think that's I think that's the future is the fact that the cells when they were primitive, they didn't have all those little organelles inside of them. They had very, very simple mechanisms. But in this, it doesn't explain why there needed to be a separate, you know, why they were separated to begin with. And that's why I wrote this this paper, um, endo, endo symbiosis, endo meaning absorb, I believe, endo symbiosis, and late stage stellar evolution according to the general theory. Um, abstract, 
is it is explained that endosymbiosis happened as a result of the collapse of bioclines in the interior of the star as it loses its thick atmosphere in late stages of evolution. Um, this paper is meant to combine both endosymbiosis with the general theory's principles, which which include life evolving on stars as they evolve. I don't want to read this whole thing. I'll just show you the little MS Paint diagram I made here. Um, now, this isn't to scale. It's just to show what's what's happening. If you want to pull up this little picture here, you have the very top layer, which is the photosynthetic bacterium, Klein. Klein meaning a horizontal layer that, that changes, um, that has... Um, much different properties per that thin layer. And then you have the aerobic bacterium cline, and then you have the host archaean cline, and it's layered like that. Now, this isn't to scale. This is just to show that the before endosymbiosis could happen, there were physically distinct clines. I call them bioclines uh, that were inside the interior of the star, before the organisms actually combined together to make a um, to make a more complete uh, cell or organism, and right here uh, you have the clients collapsing and intermingling with one another, and that is the mechanism which is why you know something like this were to happen. You this is why this is why that were to happen because see how these are see how these are separated. You know, why, why would they be separate to begin with? Well, the only real explanation for that is that they formed in different areas of the star inside the fluid atmosphere of the star as it was evolving in much later stages. And I don't want to go into this too much, but I do give a shout out to these individuals as well, and I suggest people uh, read about them. Of course, the Constantine Marish... Mar I can't pronounce his last name. Marischkowski, uh, Andrea Schimmer, Ivan Wallen, and Lynn Margolis. And Lynn Margolis was the most recent one. I think she passed away in 2011. Fucking bullshit, you know. I hate it when every time I read these things, people are already dead before I even get the chance to... Whatever. Alright, um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna post post this whole paper on there. You can read it. You guys can read it yourself. Alright, well, uh, I think that really sums it up. Alright, y'all. Later.